In the north of the Yucatan Peninsula, the town of Cancun is a port of entry to the Riviera Maya, which stretches along a hundred or so kilometers of Caribbean shoreline. There are many islands lying offshore. Some are nature reserves. Others, like Isla Mujeres, are devoted to tourism. Isla Mujeres is nearly seven kilometers long. It's the easternmost tip of Mexico. Lying partly on the mainland, the town of Cancun was designed solely with tourists in mind. On a ring of dunes, an impressive number of hotels stand cheek by jowl. The fruit of the huge civil engineering works started at the end of the 1960s. Between the sea and the lagoons, the idea of the designers was to free up Acapulco, the Pacific's great seaside resort. And it must be said that from that point of view, it's quite a success. Everything here is aimed at leisure and relaxation. Great golf champions have designed their own courses in an area that is as lively by day as it is by night. The mariachis are experts at creating a fun atmosphere. They use brass instruments and guitars, which first came here with the Spanish. Regional traditions, of course, form the basis of the show. Elsewhere, in a different style, the night is still young, and nightclubs offer shows that are awesome. In a wave of color and sound, you let yourself get swept away by the tropical frenzy. sea proclaims the color of the Riviera Maya. Running from north to south, the road serves a tourist region that was created in the 1990s. Along the Riviera Maya, whether you turn towards the sea or inland, there's nothing to interrupt the view. As there is absolutely no high land, a few rocks on the beach stand out. But there's nothing to disturb the family dip. Its reputation knows no bounds. The Playa del Carmen area has changed completely. It used to be a small fishing village. It has been modernized to respond to the needs of tourists following the success of Cancun. Here too, the sea provides much to enjoy. Visitors can get to know Mexican customs. This is why the voladores get together. The skilled performances of the voladores can be seen almost anywhere in Mexico, but the origins of the tradition are as remote as they're obscure. To the sound of the flute and a small drum, the men, hanging upside down, swing 13 times around a mast. In some cases, the aim of the ritual ceremony was to bring an end to a drought. It was also a way to attract the goodwill of the gods. The place where the sky is born 
in Mayan, Sian Ka'an. This is the name of a biosphere reserve beside the Caribbean Sea. It's a UNESCO heritage site and access to it is regulated. Specialized Mayan guides are allowed in there, but must keep to very precise itineraries. One of the guides is Alberto Senca Amal. There's an artificial canal that was by the Maya between Laguna Muir and Chuñacho, so they could get across the swamp by canoas, but there are also natural canals. This one where we are now is a natural canal that has 8 kilometers that connects the sea. In the swamp, the mangroves stand on their aerial roots. They form an impenetrable tangle in the brackish water. The geography of the area has been known for centuries. Este canal fue Our ancestors, the Mayas, used Mayas this canal to develop comercio. trade. The Mayas who lived in Central America and Guatemala, Guatemala Benin, 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 they took with them goods such as jade, clay, precious stones, pretzel feathers, cochineal, cacao, coffee, and they exchanged them with the Maya of Moyil. Remains scattered over the reserve attest to the proximity of the town of Moyil, one of the first Maya cities on the Caribbean coast. But the main aim of the reserve is above all to protect the environment and the many species of birds that come to live in these semi-aquatic surroundings. In the reserve, we have 368 species of aquatic birds. Certain specimens of the local fauna prefer to stand in the water's edge. Others prefer to drift along wherever the current takes them, an ecological and relaxed way of going exploring through the colors of nature. Still on the Riviera Maya, the Actung Chen Nature Reserve helps us to understand the very particular geology of the Yucatan. The peninsula is formed of a vast limestone plateau. This is a very friable rock that is easily penetrated by water and roots. Mineral and vegetable are very closely linked here, to such an extent that it is sometimes very difficult to tell one from the other. Roots and stalactites follow the same vertical movement. The Yucatan Plateau emerged from the Jurassic period 150 million years ago. Since then, the abundant rains of the region have eroded the limestone. They have created the cenotes, a geological phenomenon that Victor Orwayo knows well. The word cenote was formed by the Mayas, by the Spanish people, because the Maya cannot is a real pronunciation. So the Spanish people, when they arrive, they're looking for water. And Mayas people all the time say the word or not. And they change it to cenote because they cannot pronounce it. But the meaning is underground well. So there are cenotes open, enclosed like this one in the cave, and a half moon. But all is fresh water. So the Maya civilization uses it for survive. Because the rain soaks quickly into the ground, there are no rivers on the surface in the Yucatan. In all of the cenotes uh, are connected one to the other ones, but the water runs to water the coast and goes to the ocean. So all in Yucatan Peninsula there are many cenotes. Water was vital for the Maya, just as it is for the park's animals, like those of the deer family or the parrots. The parrot is one of Yucatan's fetish animals. The Maya wanted it for its feathers, which were used to decorate the priest's robes. The collared peccary was much appreciated by the Maya for its taste. The monkey was one of their astrological signs. We can get close to the wild animals in the nature reserves. The dolphins don't have to be asked twice. You can get just as close to the manatee or sea cow, a peaceful mammal and an endangered species that sailors thought was a mermaid. The 
crocodile, however, doesn't inspire the same level of trust. Looking out on the Caribbean Sea, the iguana can remain motionless and therefore unnoticed for hours. Against its rocky background, the Maya site of Tulum is perfectly adapted to the environment. The Maya appeared in the second millennium BC. They developed a spectacular culture, which declined at the end of the first millennium AD. Whether war, epidemics or drought, the precise reasons for their decline are still unknown. The walls are built of blocks of limestone that were cut with stone tools. A mortar made from crushed and burned limestone was used to assemble the blocks. A number of structures still bear the traces of paint and bas-relief sculptures. The colors have deteriorated because of the hot, damp climate of the Yucatan. And yet the city of Tulum is not very old. It was still occupied by the Maya when the Spanish conquistadors arrived. The city was abandoned in the middle of the 16th century. A few temples were still frequented for a number of years, and then the town disappeared into oblivion. The tropical forest has often overgrown the Maya sites. This is the case on the Coba site, one of the largest in the Yucatan. Many vestiges are still scattered over a wide area, only a small part of which has been excavated. The public seating for the ball game still exists. A calendar testifies to the astronomical and mathematical knowledge of the Maya. Like ours, their calendar had 365 days. It's quite a distance from one edifice to the next. In the Maya cities, the buildings are never positioned by chance. There is always a rational explanation for where they're placed. Thus, the temple of Nohochmur stands in an area that groups structures with the same religious purpose. Crossroads, there's a building from which it was possible to watch what was going on in the town. The buildings have survived because the limestone, even though it is easy to work, hardens with time. In the village of Koba, a Maya tradition survives in the form of a pottery school. Maya ceramists belong to an elite. They mastered elaborate techniques that Augustin Villalba has made accessible to everyone. The mission of the school is also to give them back their self-esteem and their culture because during the process of the conquest, all the miners were forbidden, especially the, the Mayan pottery, because in the pottery there is a lot of information about the gods, the religion, the rituals. And that is the hardest part uh, of my work, is to, to change their their way of thinking, uh, not to teach them pottery, but to, to uh, make them understand that uh, they have a beautiful culture and, and they should be proud of it. The artifacts are put on sale to provide the school with the money to buy the raw materials. Valladolid lies inland. It was founded by the Spanish conquerors on the site of a former Maya city. The Maya ruins provided the stones for the construction of different buildings. Valladolid is in the state of Yucatan. It was named after the city which was the first capital of the Kingdom of Spain. straight streets are typical of the towns created by the Spanish in America. The town's convent was created by Franciscan monks. The Franciscans built the first monasteries in Mexico. 
The missionaries played a great part in the evangelization of the Maya and of the native populations of America. And yet the Maya were not assimilating because many of them in the Yucatan were still resisting up to the middle of the 19th century.